Welcome to Startup Hack. I'm Spencer, and here at Startup Hack, we love to build custom software solutions for companies. With a decade of executive leadership as a fractional CTO and 25 years in software development, I've mastered transforming tech teams and products. All right, so the AI hype machine has been running at full throttle for over two years now, and reality is finally starting to settle in. Remember when I talked about the Web3 bubble before the crash? Well, I'm seeing the same warning signs with the way people are treating AI. And here's the twist. AI isn't going away. It's settling into its rightful place as normal technology in our toolkit. Stack Overflow's 2025 developer survey shows that 84% of developers are now using AI tools. But here's the kicker. Trust in those same tools is actually falling. The gold rush is mentally uh, mentally is fading. And what's replacing it is something much more much more useful practical understanding of software. So let's break down exactly what this means for you and for your business. Now, every senior developer I talk to says the same thing behind closed doors. Can we just be normal about this? Machine learning and adaptive systems have been around for a half a century. Large language models are evolving, not are, are, are an evolution, not a revolution dropped by aliens. Um, a lot of people put it, or uh, annual dash put this first, uh, put this perfectly. He said, this represents a breakthrough, but it did not come out of nowhere. We've been going through the cycle with Java, with cloud computing, with every hot technology that gets shoved down our throats. The difference this time is that people promoting AI are making claims that the actual code cannot deliver. When someone makes a promise that software physically cannot fulfill, that's when you know the hype has gotten dangerous. Now, LMs are have a user interface that makes them look human, and this is causing massive problems for decision making. When the AI mis makes a mistake, we call it a hallucination, which makes it seem even more like a person having a bad dream. Non-technical executives are putting bugs in completely the wrong category because they think they're talking to something with understanding. Technical people can translate what's actually happening, but the C-suite is getting exploited because they're attributing magic to statistics. The interface is designed to feel like conversation, but underneath it, it's pattern matching at scale. This get disconnect between appearance and reality is where companies are burning millions on solutions that don't actually solve their problems. Now, just, just yesterday and today, I was trying to do work through some different contracts and I was having asking it to build some tables for me with with figures and things. It wasn't just off by like a couple of percentages. It was off by like 10x on a lot of its figures. And the problem is, is once it got stuck on it, I couldn't get it to stop doing it. So we get this even when we use AI and software. And it's the reason why we have to put guardrails and have checks and balances on things. One of the most beautiful things about traditional software is that it's deterministics, zeros and ones. Falsif uh, falsified assertions, tests that pass or fail. That feeling when you build your build finally succeeds when your code runs, that's possibly because of predictable, repeatable behavior. See, in engineering, we call it five nines, which means that it works 99.999995 five nines times, right? LLMs are fundamentally non-deterministic and we're trying to shove them into scenarios that require predictable or deterministic uh, problem solving. So I've talked to people in the trenches who tell me we have a scripting system that uh, at work that does the task perfectly and now the boss wants us to throw an LLM onto it for no reason. Why would you add a fuzzy, unpredictable behavior onto something that's already automated and reliable? The answer is simple, because somebody in a corner office read an article on a plane about needing 10 pounds of AI on everything. Now, one of the best things you can do for me is to leave a comment down below because I'm curious to hear what your guys' experiences are with this. I read all of your guys' comments and it gives me, uh, it's the best compliment you can give me. Now, there's a time when we evaluate technology based on whether it could actually do the job. Now we have executives making technology decisions based on what they read in an airline magazine. 30 years ago, it was, we need cloud computing. Sorry, that was more like 10, 15 years ago, without even knowing if cloud computing was really a thing. Today, it's we need AI on tasks where AI literally can't deliver reliable output. See, what people don't understand is that best, AI is re reliable to it, 80%. That means one out of five times it's going to be wrong. So in software development, we would never accept that level of, uh, of accept, that would never be an acceptable level until suddenly now we put AI on top of it. People earlier in their careers are sucking it up and pretending LLMs are the right tool because they're worried about promotions or layoffs. So we've, uh, we've lost the ability to push back and say, boss, that's not the right tool for the job. Now, here's something that actually gets overlooked constantly. Large language models don't understand anything. They're statistical padding, pattern matchers trained on text. You can't tell an LLM don't hallucinate because it has no concept of what that means. They lack any representation of what a man is, what a woman is, what a boat is, and why they make mistakes for any human with having six fingers. 
Without a world model, you can't have genuine reasoning, planning, or understanding of cause and effect. Gary Marcus calls these systems ghosts or spirits, ethereal entities mimicking humans without actual comprehension. Andre Carbathy calls it jagged intelligence. You cannot build real, real artificial general intelligence from a system that fundamentally doesn't understand the world it's operating in. Now, for years, the industry believed a simple formula, more data plus more compute equals better AI forever. That worked until Reese until the last six to 12 months. Now we're starting to see diminishing returns that look like we're hitting a wall, not a temporary plateau. Computational power for training models has been doubling every 3.4 months since 2012. That's faster than Moore's law and completely unsustainable. We've already picked all the low hanging fruit. Tricks like reducing precision from 32 points to 16 bit to 8 bit are exhausted. China figured this out and pivoted to practical applications of current AI while US companies still chase AGI fantasy. Fantasy. So pure scaling isn't the path to AGI. Attention isn't all you need, despite what the famous Transformer paper title suggests. Um, now, Andre Carbathy talks about the march of nines. Getting AI to work 90% of the time is the easiest part. Going from 90 to 99%, remember in software engineering, we need 99.9999% of the time, right? Five nines. But going from 90 to 99% takes as much work as getting from 90, from zero to 90 in the first place. And each additional nine requires additional effort. Self-driving cars have been have had impressive demos since 1980s. Waymo gave perfect demo rights in 2014. Yet it's just recently we're starting to see Tesla FSD actually starting to drive. So it's taken, us, taken them over a decade to solve that one problem. AI coding assistants that work great for simple autocomplete might need a full decade to handle production critical code reliably. Every startup showing you an impressive demo is really just showing you what they've hit that they've hit the first nine. Now, a Stanford study found that employment for software developers aged 20 to 25 has declined about 20%. And part of this is because of the perception that junior developers are no longer needed. But there's uh, but Stack Overflow CEO told B told the BBC that AI won't be without problems, and this opens a whole new career path for Gen Z developers. And we've already started to see that. We get a lot of people who start with software that was written by AI and then brings it to us to try to fix or solve problems. Companies betting everything on AI over talent development are cannibalizing their own workforce future. So AGI isn't coming, but specialized AI in specific domains, that's where the real value is. And that's what we do here at Startup Hack. We're spending a lot of time to build systems. You can see some of these over my corner, back behind, over my shoulder behind me, some of these AI systems that we're building on real hardware for real clients that do real things in a very specific domain. So that's what AI is really used for. Instead of systems that try to do everything poorly, we're seeing a shift towards AI that deeply understands one specific area. A vertical AI solution with deep domain expertise will always outperform a horizontal platform trying to be everything to everyone. And this matches what I've been saying for over two decades in software development. Specialized tools consistently deliver better results than general purpose ones. Companies are waking up to that fact that they don't need AGI. They need focused solutions to focus problems. The winners won't be chasing super intelligence. They'll be building tools that solve real problems reliably. So there's a growing chasm between AI demos and actual production implementation that deliver value. I've consulted with companies that spent millions on AI initiatives that never made it past the pilot phase. Building an AI chatbot is easy, but building one that reliably increases customer satisfaction or reduces cost is extraordinarily difficult. Most companies lack the data infrastructure, talent, and organization process to successfully implement AI. The engineering challenge of deploying AI at scale are being dramatically underestimated by executives and investors. Investors, The demo is easy. The imp implementation is where the innovation lives or dies. So having a strategy for AI, even if that strategy is not adopting AI, is what separates winners from losers right now. The AI companies that figure out how to extract value from their customers' unique proprietary data. That's where things get really interesting. If you've got proprietary data that no one else has access to, it's very hard to beat you at that game. AI can't make up your customer records, your operational history, your domain-specific knowledge. The special sauce that can't be easily replicated will guarantee a place in the market. Data and differentiation in that data is the holy grail in the long run because no AI can fabricate what it's never seen. Now, the death of AGI dream is actually good news for businesses that need real solutions today. 
because see what's going to crumble from that is some really good useful LLMs that so normal software developers can use in real software development practices and put into your software. So instead of waiting for some mythical super intelligence, you can invest in targeted AI applications that solve actual problems right now. And we're about to launch some of them here. And we're really excited to announce them as we move into the new year. The $1.5 trillion being poured into chasing AGI fantasies could be redirected towards practical improvements that deliver real ROI. Customer software solutions built by ex experienced engineers will outperform generic AI wrappers every single time. We're entering an era where AI hype cycle is finally collapsing into reality, and reality is where good engineering thrives. The companies that will win aren't the ones chasing AGI. The other ones building solutions that work reliably for specific use cases. Now, curious to hear your thoughts. Do you agree? Do you disagree? I love to have a great discussion, so make sure you leave a comment and make sure to like and subscribe. Here at Startup Hack, we love uh, to build custom software solutions for companies, so reach out because we'd love to help. Check out startuphack.com, and here's some great information about our services. Hi, I'm Spencer, a fractional CTO. With over a decade of executive leadership and 25 years in software development, I've transformed technology teams and products for businesses just like yours. As you are fractional CTO, you get this strategic guidance of a seasoned technology executive without the full-time commitment. Perfect for companies ready to leverage cutting edge technology without expanding headcount. My team at Startup Hack has already built advanced AI agents for small and medium businesses, automating complex workflows and delivering advanced ROI to human workflows. We specialize in creating custom software that connects your systems into a single coherent technology ecosystem. Our development approach focuses on tangible business outcomes. For one client, we developed AI powered workflows that cut days off of human processes. For another company, by connecting multiple systems, we reduce processing time to increase their ROI by over 75%. We we don't just write code, we architect solutions that scale. Whether you need cloud system architecture, data integration between legacy systems, or custom AI agents that automate your unique business processes, my team delivers results that exceed your expectations. Having led technology for a lot of companies and launched seven successful brands of my own, I bring battle-tested expertise to your business challenges. Our specialty is turning technological complexity into business advantage. So if you're ready to harness the power of AI and custom software to drive your business forward, let's connect Together, we'll build technology that doesn't just solve today's problems, it positions you for tomorrow's opportunities. Technology leadership, decades of experience, AI powered. Reach out today and we can help you. Check out startuphack.com slash Spencer.